Hello, I'm Ryan Johnson with Vans Aircraft, and today I'd like to talk about a few improvements that we've made to the Fab Airbox. Over the years, there's been a few areas that have fatigued, and a recent release of information, you can find it on the bottom part of the service information page for many of the airplanes. It's the Fab Airbox instructions. You can download a free copy there. You'll find part numbers there about what we're talking about today. And uh, there's also, of course, the revised instructions. But we're here today to give you a little overview, and I'll introduce Scott McDaniels, and he'll take it from here. Thanks, Scott. So to highlight just a few of the changes that we've made uh, based on ex a lot of service experience uh, with a lot of years uh, and a lot of hours put on the airplanes, uh, we'll just start looking at the airbox here and work front to back to give you some details on what some of the changes are. So one of the first ones is changing to a, a very soft, flexible seal to interface the airbox to the inlet. The mechanical coupling of the airbox to the inlet on the cowling is a contributor to cracking on the airbox because the engine moves, the cowling does not, and that's putting loads uh, into portions of the airbox if that interface is stiff. So the, the new seal is a soft seal, allows a lot more movement of the airbox without uh, inducing loads uh, onto the, the parts of it. Moving back from that, the next thing is uh, we deleted the MS metal hinge that the original carb heat door was mounted with, and we're now mounting the door with a Garlock baffle seal fabric hinge. So because it's fabric, uh, it can't fatigue, and there is no free play in it like there is even in the MS hinge when it's brand new. There's still just a little bit of play there, and that little bit of play with vibration influence over time produces wear. So this doesn't have any, any free play. And it, since it's not metal, uh, it can't fret um, or wear. So we've been uh, flying uh, this on a couple of different employee airplanes for a few years now, just as a uh, prototyping process and I've had really good service from it, so it's been introduced as standard into the airbox. Associated with that is um, changing the arm that actuates the door. For a long time, we've used a, a, a bug nut that has a very small amount of bearing area in the arm uh, at the pivot point. So we've changed to an arm that has a welded bushing that has a lot of surface area on it and then a clamping bolt that actually pivots in that bushing. So uh, that alleviates the wear problems that we've had on some airplanes with uh, the hole getting enlarged. Moving back from that, uh, the, the clamp point of the cable is down on the air box, so we've got a good angle relative to uh, the uh, travel stroke of the arm on the carb heat door. This one is slightly different than what you'll see in the plans. Uh, this is still using the traditional uh, cushioned ADEL clamp. Uh, the standard fab kit now comes with an all steel uh, clamp that does a good job of clamping and grabbing on the Bowden cable. Then moving aft from that is the main top of the air box. And that's one of the changes uh, that uh, will be really popular for a lot of builders, I think, that have experienced an interference with this left-hand side corner of the airbox over here with uh, the interior of the cowl uh, in, in the induction scoop area. Because of our design of the engine mount, 
offsetting the engine slightly to the left so that uh, we've got right hand thrust on the, the engine and prop combination with the spinner still in the center so that the airplane looks symmetrical. That pushes the aft end of the engine towards the left side of the airplane. And that makes the carburetor offset to the left of the scoop in the cowling. And by design, the carburetor is slightly off to the left anyway, so then we're making it even worse by going that direction with the offset of the engine. So we've introduced a top plate that has an offset designed into it. And if Greg even wants to come this way a little bit, looking from the front, you might be able to see it better, uh, that the carburetor is a lot closer to this side of the airbox than the right-hand side of the airbox. So the opening that's in the top plate is actually offset from the center, biasing the entire airbox over to the right. So providing more clearance, particularly down here in this lower corner uh, where it got really close on some cowl installations. All the details for that are also in the, the new fab airbox instructions. So moving aft from there, we have details that have been added for an interference that's always existed on some of the A model airplanes. You can see that the nose gear leg is passing through the profile of the airbox just very slightly. And we had never really addressed that in any detail, but uh, the FAB instructions now do uh, give you very detailed instructions how to deal with, with that issue if you are working with one of the, the A model airplanes. Lastly is details of drain holes in the bottom of the airbox. I'm not sure that this one has them both, but uh, the FAB instructions detail uh, a drain hole just forward of the aft end of the filter, and then one at the very far aft end of the airbox, so that even on a tail dragger or some of the airplanes that sit more tail low than, than this one, which is a 7A. Um, water pooling there from uh, you know, entering the inlet during washing the airplane or, or flight in rain conditions, that type of thing. Uh, there's a place for that to drain out. That's it for the, the main changes. Uh, another detail that I'll just mention uh, based on experience is uh, there's often a lot of discussion about uh, the incredible shrinking air filter. We do know that they do shrink. Uh, K&N produces these primor primarily for an automotive use. The air boxes that they're installed in, in an automotive or other ground vehicle situations, usually the air filter is captured uh, by some uh, physical means in the air box that helps hold its uh, dimension. Our design in keeping a really clean airbox for airflow and trying to maximize uh, the benefit of uh, the best manifold pressure that we can get, uh, we don't do that. We're just clamping between the top and the bottom of the airbox. And from the influence of fuel, age, other things that we probably even aren't aware of, they do shrink and you can't consider them to be good for use forever. Uh, it's a replace, you know, on inspection and condition. Um, so if, if it's starting to look like it's not fitting your current air box, you know, very well, then it's time to get a new one and replace it. Another point we want to highlight is the importance of 
the gap between the extension and I'm using my finger to just visualize the extension that we've mold onto the inlet of the cowl that the seal interfaces with. It's important that there be a generous gap between the forward edge of the fab air box and the aft edge of that extension. That also helps reduce the mechanical coupling between the two and takes the best advantage of the soft seal, allowing the airbox to move around with the engine movement and not being inducing a lot of loads into the airbox, causing uh, cracking and failure, etc. There's also some important detail in the fab instructions that is missed by a lot of builders of how important it is that that extension come far enough aft as described in the instructions to avoid having a lot of difficulty in installing and removing the cowl. If you don't do that, the air box ends up extending too far forward and is, is somewhat captured in that space and there's a lot of interferences uh, when the cowl is, is being put on and off. For the mounting of the top plate to the carburetor or throttle body or fuel injection servo, depending on the situation for your particular installation, is now referencing large area washers, which obviously we can't see here, but they're below each of the four attachment points on the four corners uh, of the carburetor or whatever you have uh, installed on your engine. So an AN uh, 970 large area washer to distribute uh, whatever uh, bending load there is induced by vibration and try and avoid cracking uh, right at the edge of the holes in the top plate. Uh, that's been found to uh, greatly help the longevity of the top plates. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, we hope you go check out the instructions. These are definitely improvements you want to make. Uh, this is my airplane here and I've had about 740 trouble free hours uh, so far and in your aircraft. How many are you up to now? Uh, about 300, 300. With, with, with the new design. So yeah. a thousand hours cumulative of great performance. Go check out those instructions and have a good one. Yeah, we, Fly hope, safe. we hope you find this helpful.